There are many prophetic leaders who feel they have heard what the Holy Spirit is saying for 2019. One of those ministers is our good friend Patricia King, and she joins us on the program today to share her word. Later, Joan and I will share the things that the Lord has placed on our heart as well. Stay with us. This is Lifeline Today. Welcome to Lifeline today. Well, we are glad to see you on the program. And uh, Joan, we have a great show today because we're going to be talking about what prophetic leaders have seen for the coming year. Well, you know, and it is a good time of year to just seek the Lord and hear from God's heart what He's yeah. got on His agenda for the year. And although, many leaders do that, Dick. Yeah, although we are well into the year. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> it still is because uh, it's interesting this year because I've found that it's not just at the beginning of the year, but right continuing, there are mm -hmm. people sensing what God is saying. Yes. And uh, so I, I, it seems to me like this is more prevalent this year than there has been in the past uh, years. And uh, mm -hmm. I know that's true for us as well. Because I really believe that this year is a critical year, not just a critical year, but it's the appointed time as mm. far as uh, Canada goes. I feel like it's an appointed time, not the appointed time, but an appointed time well, where God is going to do some really strategic things in this you know, spirit. And, and I think that's being said about the... Uh, generally about globally as well about the kingdom of God that there is something really strategic about the moment we're in mm -hmm. uh, you know one of the things that I've preached for years is that the impending harvest mm -hmm. there's a time when the harvest of the earth will be and we of course are talking about souls coming into the kingdom yeah. and uh, I think what we're sensing then is a step or major step towards that. Yeah. Uh, beyond any of the other things we're talking about in Canada, there's political issues, there's other is social moral issues, but I really believe those are secondary to the great harvest that God is moving the entire church towards. And uh, that's certainly a big part of it. Mm -hmm. And so today on the program, Dick, we have a very good friend of ours, Patricia King, yeah. who is uh, founder of Patricia King Ministries, and she's in Maricopa, uh, Arizona. She's a Canadian, though, and uh, she has sent us a video clip of the three, one of the, um, I guess, three of the top prophetic words that God has given her for this year. Yeah. Now, Patricia also is the global leader of women on the front lines, right. and that's very, very inspiring to me. And also women, she has a huge women in the ministry network that is all over the world, Dick, yeah. and I'm a part of that too. So I love Patricia King because she's just so genuine. And uh, yeah. Well, I, we've known her since the 80s. Yes, we have. When she was uh, lived in the lower mainland BC, uh, she came often and preached in our church, yes. didn't she? She we have her come in and do some things and that's a long time ago and now she preaches all over the world yes, she and does. it's very hard to yep. get her but Patricia King is coming to Lethbridge to Third Day Church to uh, and we are going to host a women on the front lines right uh, yep. conference for her in May that'll May. be Mother's Day weekend May I think it is 10th to, to the 12th yep. yeah she'll be with us so yeah. I'm really looking forward to that yeah now they do them and elsewhere they're going to do one in Edmonton uh, and but then this one will be in May and what a great weekend Mother's yeah. Day weekend, Mother's Day weekend. Uh, it'll be a really special weekend and yeah. you're hosting it so that's wonderful we're excited about that we're going to go right now and we're going to go listen to what Patricia has to say uh -huh. it's uh you know, she always has some really good things every year, but I think this year it's a little different. She's got these three points that are worth listening to. Let's yeah. go now. Hello, my name is Patricia King, and I'm so grateful to Dick and Joan DeWert for allowing me the privilege of ministering to you some prophetic words, especially uh, concerning how they will impact Canada. One of the significant words that I've been carrying in this season is about new levels of warfare that the church is going to engage in, which means new levels of victory, new levels of glory. 
the Lord has revealed to me that the enemy is pulling out all stops and that there's going to be some very uh, strategic plants of the enemy as he targets the church and tries to weaken the church in this next season. The reason why is because he's running scared. This is going to be the most victorious season for the church and the enemy always overplays his hand. We never want to be demon focused. We want to be Jesus focused. We don't want to be focused on uh, how big the battle is, but on how great Jesus is. Our, our commitment is to the victory that Jesus accomplished. But at the same time, we realize that Jesus gave us warning. He said, beware of wolves that'll come to you in sheep's clothing. We know that Peter gave warning uh, concerning infiltrators, that Paul gave warning. He said that you're in a battle that's not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, and of course, spirits in the spiritual dimension. And so we've got these warnings within scripture. Again, not that we would focus on them, but that we would be aware that there is a battle out there. Now, Jesus wants you to be a recipient of the, of the encounter of winning the battles. He wants you to experience it. So get ready to be clothed with a new mantle of authority. Now, the Lord prompted me to write a book uh, called Exposed Witchcraft in the Church. And it's based on some experience I've had over being in ministry for over 40 years of seeing actual witchcraft plants come into the body and target leaders. So one of the things that I want to encourage you to do is to pray over your leaders. Pray over your pastors, your apostolic leaders, your prophetic leaders, leaders of ministry, leaders in government, leaders in business, because that is who the enemy is primarily targeting. He knows if he can get the leader, he can get the flock. So we need to put a big hedge of protection around our leaders. I was in Africa years ago working with Dr. Benson Hosa and met a number of people who were um, ex-witches, ex-Satanists, and many of them carried the same testimony. And the testimony was that they would go in when they were still in witchcraft and Satanism, they would go into churches as an imposter, imposing as a Christian, and their target was, their, their, their assignment was the pastor to bring him down, usually through sexual immorality. And when they would get him down, then they could get the whole flock. And so we want to be aware in my book, Exposed Witchcraft in the Church, I go into more detail on this, but also teach believers how to stand in the victory and use weapons well, because we are going to have testimony after testimony of the glory of God. Whenever the enemy comes in, then like a flood, God raises up a standard against him. Okay, so that's what's going to happen. You are going to know the glory of the King of glory. Who is the King of glory? He is the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. That's who the King of glory is. You're going to get acquainted with him and his glory realm in that dimension in this next season. The next word I want to bring to you for 2019 is the Lord is raising up benefactors. Now, a benefactor is someone who brings benefit. Usually they're known to cut the checks for big projects or for, for particular specific needs. And God is looking. His eyes are moving to and fro throughout the earth to find individuals who, who can be trusted with the increase that he wants to bring in this next season. Those who are interested in kingdom advancement and not their own selfish agendas, he is looking for those so that he can entrust to steward massive amounts of uh, funding so that um, he can advance his kingdom. And so we look at the example of Abraham, where God said in, in Genesis 12, he said, Abraham, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to make you a blessing. Basically, that is the anointing of a benefactor, is to become a blessing. And you can become a benefactor by receiving the mandate, God's looking to mantle many people with this. And I had had about three prophetic words from different prophets um, that didn't know each other had brought words saying uh, that God was going to bring me uh, beneficiaries. And I thought, well, that's nice, but I'd rather be a benefactor. And I'd rather be the one cutting the checks. And he said, well, I'm going to allow you to do that. So what I started to do is every day I look for opportunities that I can bring benefit. 
every day. And so even if it's in a small way, I will say I am a benefactor and I'm benefiting right now. And so my ability to be a benefactor is growing and growing and growing because I start out with a small and the Lord's saying to you, start out with a small and it will increase. And the third word I want to bring to you in this session is about the harvest. We are in a harvest season right now. This is a time of great harvest. It's a sign, a sign from the Lord, even what's happening in the nations uh, at, at this time. I just got back from a crusade a few months back where there was almost half a million people gathered in, in the outdoors with no seating for hours on end to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he moved in miracles, signs and wonders. Many lame walked, the blind saw, the deaf heard, the demon eyes were set free, the sick were healed. It was an amazing time. And in that one outreach, over 330 thousand documented commitments to salvation took place. I was in other crusades, engaging in other crusades where 35,000, 40,000, we just finished an, um, uh, partnering with another one where there was again thousands of people and these are all basically in unreached people groups. Okay, these are people that's first time commitments, the first time that they've heard the gospel. It is harvest time. We just opened up a new church plant in Cambodia, right in the slum. And the first Sunday service, it was packed full. And many of those people had never heard the gospel before. And there was many salvations. And so God wants you to be aware of the season. You're to discern the times and the seasons. This is harvest time. And so the church is to prepare for the harvest. How? Begin by praying for the lost. Pray for the lost. Focus your prayers on praying for the lost. It might start out with your loved ones or your neighbors or people in your community, but God will start giving you a burden for the lost and pray for the revelation of Jesus Christ to come to their lives because this is harvest time. It's time to put the sickle in. And the other thing is to sow into the harvest. Uh, you can do that through word decrees, through your financial giving, uh, but also sowing your life into outreach. Look for opportunities that you can go and harvest souls. And so 2019 is going to be an amazing year. I have other words that I'd love to bring to you maybe at another time, but it is going to be an amazing time of acceleration and increase for you. It is a time to reach out. It is a time to expand. It is a time to enlarge. It's not a time to shrink back. It's a time to stir up the fresh hunger in your heart for God and go for it. So I bless you and I bless the nation of Canada as it opens up to a fresh harvest of souls that the benefactors in Canada will arise and that new levels of warfare will manifest in the nation shifts and changes that come from knowing victorious warfare. God bless you. Help change the spiritual climate of Canada by partnering financially with Lifeline Today with Dick and Joan and share in the breakthrough anointing that's on this ministry. Partner $25 a month and receive as a thank you gift Dick DeWert's powerful audio message on CD entitled Realize Your Dream and learn how to find your God-given purpose and see breakthroughs in your life. Partner at $50 a month and we'll send you Dick DeWert's latest audio teaching, The Power of the Anointing plus this distinctive vial of anointing oil from the Holy Land for use in prayer for healing, consecration, protection, and worship. Partner at $100 a month and receive the CDs, anointing oil, plus this special leather-bound journaling Bible personally signed with a note of encouragement by Joan DeWert. Your tax-deductible donation will strengthen this ministry and make a difference in our nation. Call today and say yes to becoming a partner with Dick and Joan. Phone 403-942-0123 or email info at dickandjoan.com today. We surely are in a spiritual war, aren't we? Greater than ever before, I think. But you know, it says in Psalm 24, verse 8, Who is the King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord invincible in battle? That word invincible means he is absolutely incapable of being conquered, defeated, or subdued. That's our God who is on our side. And if God is for us, who can be against us? 
We are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us, amen? What spiritual battle are you waging right now? Will you call us here in the prayer center so that we can pray with you? We'll stand with you for victory in every area of your life. Give us a call right now. Intercessors are standing by ready to pray for you. You know, that's something Jill just said was that, uh, that in it, when it comes to spiritual warfare, mm -hmm. we always know who wins. You know, God always wins. It's like and we've if, read the back of the book. <laughs> yeah. And the thing about us is that people say, well, when, what happens when I fail? Well, I don't know how to ex say this or address that except to say if we align with what God is doing, if we are completely in agreement with his purposes, mm -hmm. then we will win. Mm -hmm. Then That's we right. will succeed. Because if God is for us, then who can be against us? That's that scripture. And uh, Romans 8 again says, we are more than conquerors through Christ yeah. who loves us. So that's something to remember. And every time there's advancement in the kingdom of God, there is warfare, spiritual warfare. <clears throat> we're talking about uh, not, you know, the other kind, but we're talking about spiritual warfare, which is, by the way, the more important warfare. Yeah. Because everything that goes on in earth, it starts in the spiritual realm. So, you know, here today we just heard from Patricia, mm -hmm. a friend of ours, and, and she talks about that. She talks about the increased uh, witchcraft, which is only a reflection of the fact that there's going to be great victories. Yes, that's right. And that's the right perspective to she take. She said this, and I thought that was interesting. She said, the enemy is running scared. Yeah. And when he runs scared, he pulls out all the stops. Yeah. And so, but the thing is, we just have to be wise, Dick. When we, we need to have our eyes open and our ears open, and we need to be hearing from the, yeah. the heart of God. Because if if there are weapons formed against our ministries or churches, if, if we're in a place of communion with God, we'll know. Yeah. He'll let us know. But then we have to know also our weapons, yeah. you know, and that is uh, Revelation 12 yeah. and verse 12, is it, where it says they overcame him by the blood of the lamb, the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives to the death. Mm -hmm. That speaks to me of walking in humility. You know, again, it always comes down to being surrendered to the plan Surrender. and purpose and will yes, of God. Exactly. You know, if you're not uh, yielded to the Lord, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, Patricia said something about benefactors. There's all yeah. kinds of people. If you had a church service <laughs> and you said, how many would like to be blessed financially? 100% of the hands. Every hand would go up. But, <laughs> you know, very often we don't emphasize the second part, but... When God blesses you, it's so that you can be a blessing. Mm -hmm. That means, I, use, I always said it this way, he can get it to you if he can get it through you. Mm -hmm. And he'll often may ask you when he blesses you the first time to give it all. Yeah. Oh, just to see if he can get it through you. Mm -hmm. Oh, but God, I just got my blessing. Yeah, yeah. well, give it all. Yeah. And uh, Joan, you and I have gone through these seasons in our life where we've uh, sowed generously or we've given it all. Uh, you know, even in recently in the, the ministry that we have now, we've invested of ourselves immensely yes, and right. placed it all. And uh, it's only because we believe God is in it that he's led us to do it. Mm -hmm. And we also know that he is the God who blesses. Mm -hmm. When you release things for him, he will always look after you. Dick, he's looking for what's in our hearts. Sure. And when he's talking about benefactors, I believe that he will raise up people yeah. in this day and age. I believe in the marketplace um, uh, area, he's going to cause business men and women to be so blessed that they will be the ones who will be able to write sure. the big checks. But there have been times in our lives where we had a certain amount of money, but we knew it wasn't enough for our need. So then we thought it must be our, our seed. seed. Yeah. And so we sowed the whole thing. One of the times I remember was when we needed to build a TV, a, a station. TV station and we needed well over a million dollars at that time. It would be way more than that now. Well, actually, we need more than that. It was a couple but, million. Yep. But we had $25,000 in yeah. the bank. We looked at it, we prayed about it, and we decided that must be our seed. Yeah. So we asked God what to do, and we ended up sowing the whole seed mm -hmm. to David Maines to honor him as the father of Christian television in Canada. And you know what, Dick? When we sowed it, our bank account looked really grim. 
But you know what? Within a year, we had a television station. Yeah. And that's how God works. Yeah. Sometimes you don't even see how it's happening, but God works. He'll never let you go with your need unmet if you will make sure that his needs are met. Absolutely. And, you know, again, he can get it to you if he can get it through you. He's mm -hmm. seeing if I can test your heart and trust you. Mm -hmm. uh, and then again, does that mean that God will bless you and you never have anything for yourself? Not at all. No. Definitely. He will bless you personally. Yeah. You know, I really believe we need to stop here for just a minute because I think that as we're sharing this, we're talking to some people that are watching, Dick, and you're just having just a confirmation in your heart. This is the prayer of my heart. God bless me so that I can be a blessing to your kingdom and to the harvest that's coming. And so I'm just going to pray for you because like Patricia said, if that is you, start with the little things. Every day, look for a place to be a benefactor. Look for someone to uh, benefit. Look for someone to come alongside and benefit or to give financial benefit to. And then God will increase and increase and increase. So Father, I just pray right now for those, because I know that there are several watching that you've just said, that's me. I pray, Father God, that you would just cause them to um, come in. I just pray for the right circumstances around them, Father, in their business or whatever it is, so that um, so that you would give them the favor that they need and that the money would come into their hands. Lord, I also know that God has seen your heart. And so your heart has been prepared for this. And so, Father, I just pray that you would do it quickly so that they would know that this is a confirmation of the word of God that came to them on this program today. And we thank you for that, Father. You know, I believe there's many that need to be benefactors for this ministry, Joan. We're believing for a lot of things this year. Uh, we just, um, you know, as I was doing a Facebook Live just before the taping here, and yeah. I talked about how we are having some issues now with our edit suite and so on. Mm -hmm. We send our, our uh, programs to Dallas to mm -hmm. go on the television network across Canada, but it starts in Dallas. And when we send it, there have been technical issues, and they, we think that uh, those are most likely because some of our equipment needs updating in the mm -hmm. editing suite and so on. So, and then we're looking at our cameras. We have some additional things we need for those. And so we're believing for enlargement with our, yeah. our television. And this past uh, year in 2018 was a real battle to get everything up to, and so that we could tape right here. And we're taping in our own building right now. Yeah. And we're also buying our building this year and we need a lot of money for that. <laughs> and we know we need a miracle for that. Yeah. So if you feel God is calling you to be a benefactor in that sense, we certainly receive it because we have a vision. We're, we yeah. have a vision to be doing conferences throughout Canada, uh, as we already are in Ottawa, and, and uh, we'll be in Lethbridge with uh, David Damien and Charlie Robinson. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on that we feel uh, is going to have a significant impact in the spiritual realm over our nation and, of mm -hmm. course, over people's lives. One thing we need to talk about, Joan, is just something the Lord said to us. Uh, you know, over the, uh, the end of, you know, Christmas season, then you go into the new year, and, <clears throat> and even in the weeks that followed, you really spend time uh, in our prayer services seeking the Lord and thinking about the future, you know, mm -hmm. thinking about the new year. And the Lord spoke to me in one service. <laughs> We call it our tefillah service, which means it's worship and prayer. And uh, the Holy Spirit showed me this image of a train. And I saw conductors on the platform and they're going, <laughs> all aboard, all aboard, you know, yes. and felt like the train had been taking a significant amount of time to get ready. But now it was time to go, to leave the station. And I felt the Lord say this was us. This was our ministry, but also... Uh, Maybe in a broader way, it was what God wanted to do in our nation. Mm -hmm. And I felt it was time to get on board and to see the train begin, which is a, what prophetically would be moved towards its purpose. Yes, right. And uh, the other thing, then as soon as I saw that image, I heard the Lord say this to me, you are to expect double in 2019. Wow. And uh, I thought it was an interesting way he said it. He didn't say, you're going to get double. <laughs> he said, you need to expect double. So I thought the way I understood that is the Lord was saying, we need to lift our expectation of faith, mm -hmm. our confession, and begin to believe that he's going to enlarge us for his purpose. Mm. 
And that's really something that I felt was really key for our viewers. Yeah. Because it's not just you and me he's talking about. No. He's talking about you. Those of you that watch this program that are part of this ministry, those of you in particular who are partners, mm -hmm. this is a word for you. Double for you. Double and increase. Expect double. Yeah. Dick, and that means that we have to pull it in by faith yeah. and speak it and declare it. Yeah. And then we'll see it happen. But we need to expect it. Get up every day in the morning expecting double. Whatever that means to you. Whether mm. you, you know, in the area of family salvation or in the area of finances or favor for your job or whatever it is, expect double. And uh, many times in the Bible, it refers to double for your trouble. Yep. In Isaiah 61, it's uh, talking to the Jewish and nation. Yep. And it says, and God will give you double for your trouble. And many of you have experienced trouble over the last yep. several years. Well, the word of the Lord to you today for 2019 is to expect double for your trouble. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that is something well, from, that is in the scripture. Well, uh, one of these promises that we talked about, the double promise to the Jews, the Israelites, was after in one of their most difficult times, they'd gone into exile. It was in their most challenging time of trials, testings, chastisement. <laughs> and the Lord said, but I'm going to restore double. Yes, and, right. And again, this is about four times in the mm -hmm. Old Testament where he specifically says that. Yeah. It's a principle that we pick up in the scripture. And so I want to speak that double over your life. Amen. And uh, be, I, I speak it over everyone in our ministry because you can say, well, expect double, but who's God going to bring the double through? Mm -hmm. He's going to do it through every one of us. Yeah, He's right. going to bless each of us and you in particular. Yeah. Uh, he's going to bless you. So I release the double blessing over your life. I release that blessing for yeah. increase mm -hmm. and I release a breakthrough anointing. But you, I am going to ask you to expect double and mm. sow into double. You can sow into this ministry, for example. Something and, else really exciting that I want you to share about, Dick, is something called a holy roar. Wow. Will you just do that? I mean, we, we, we could do a whole program on, on it, it, but it's so exciting. So in listen. That, in a similar, we got one minute. Well, yeah. we, in a service like that, Joan, we, yeah. uh, I, we, I heard the Lord say that there would be a holy roar that would emanate right from mm -hmm. this place to the nation. And now the mm -hmm. roar is a symbol in scripture uh, of God doing something proactively. Uh, mm -hmm. Amos 3, 7 says, Surely God does nothing unless he reveals his circuit, servant, servants to, uh, his secret to the servants, his prophet. A lion has roared. Mm -hmm. uh, who will not fear? The Lord has spoken. Who can but prophesy? It's an example of how God moves. Yeah. Anyway, we're out of time to even <laughs> say that. Much more about we'll that. We'll share more about it yeah, in other we will. programs. But let me just encourage you. I feel that's a word for our nation in the 2019 and beyond. There's the, coming a roar out of the church this, this year. Thank you for being with us today. Remember this. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. This program is supported by viewers like you, and we thank you for your partnership. We want to hear from you. Send us your prayer requests, praise reports, and comments on the program. Be sure to visit our website for up-to-date information or get in touch with us by email or phone. Also, don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Dick and Joan are now available for conferences and events in your area. To book them for your event, Call 587-425-5730 or email info at dickandjoan.com.